So which teams look in trouble? Well, when we plot revenue against squad cost ratio, we can see that astonishingly out of 20 Premier League clubs would have breached these new financial rules. This would really throw the pigeons among the cats. What? <laughs> The Premier League are gearing up for a game-changing shake-up with fresh financial fair play rules on the horizon. Let's jump straight into the action and uncover the ins and outs of these changes and what it will mean for the teams. Premier League clubs are poised to shift gears away from traditional profit and sustainability rules, opting instead for a model akin to UEFA's squad cost control. But what does that entail, you ask? Well, I, I don't know, to be fair. Put simply, it boils down to how free league clubs can spend on player wages, transfers and agents fees. UEFA is eyeing a cap of 70% of revenue and player sales for these costs, and the Premier League seems ready to adopt a similar approach, though with a more relaxed 85% threshold for clubs not competing in Europe. Let's get on with it. Might want to come back to me, Jeff. Well, OK, we'll come back to you. Tony. So how do we calculate it? Let's use the previous season's Premier League lineup as an example and break down the calculation step by step. We begin with club revenues. Manchester City topped the charts at 713 million, with Bournemouth the lowest at 141, a staggering 572 million difference. On top of that, clubs factor in any profits from player sales, Manchester City again leading the pack at 122 million, and Brighton not far behind. Combine these figures, and you have the foundation for calculating your squad cost ratio. Against these, we add up player and coach staff costs. For simplicity, we've estimated these at 85% of total staff costs. And add to that transfer fee costs for acquiring players. Divide these costs by total income and you've got your squad cost ratio. So which teams look in trouble? Well, when we plot revenue against squad cost ratio, we can see that astonishingly 10 out of 20 Premier League clubs would have breached these new financial rules. Hey, this would really throw the pigeons among the cats. <laughs> Except for Chelsea, the top six clubs comfortably stay within the 85% threshold. Brighton stands out from the pack due to their plethora of high-value transfer sales, setting them apart from the other 14 clubs. But just how far off are these clubs from aligning with the new squad cost regulations? Given the revenues and player sales discussed earlier, let's determine the maximum squad cost allowed to stay within the 85% threshold. City are clear ahead at over 700 million, with most clubs allowed between 100 and 250. So let's see how they actually did. City are sitting pretty with headroom of over 200 million. On the flip side, Chelsea find themselves at the opposite end of the spectrum with an overspend of 59 million. The majority of the remaining 15 sides see overspends of 20 to 30 million. However, what about teams competing in Europe where the threshold tightens to a mere 70%? Man City and Spurs are the only teams in the top six with significant headroom of 70 to 80 million. Achieving 70% seems daunting for most clubs, except for Brighton, who reap the rewards of substantial player sales. Adding to this complexity is the possibility of a hard cap on total squad costs, rumoured to be anchored to the club with the lowest revenue distribution in the Premier League. For instance, Southampton received 104 million in 2023. If the reported multiple of five times is applied, this would result in a maximum squad cost cap of 518 million. This adjustment would only impact Man City, bringing their maximum squad cost a little closer to their actual expenditure. Clearly, many teams will have to rethink their squad cost strategies to comply with the new regulations. Furthermore, it raises a broader concern. These regulations may hinder clubs with ambitions of climbing to higher levels, as they must adhere to the squad cost limit each and every year. Let's revisit Man City and analyze how they would have fared under this rule since their takeover in 2008. Okay. We can see their revenue and player sales have grown from 59 million pre-takeover to a massive 834 million in 2023, growing at 18% a year. Now let's factor in the squad cost. Although they would have been compliant over the past decade, the initial years demanded significant investment in the playing squad for Man City to establish itself as the powerhouse it is today. In fact, Man City would have failed to comply during the first five years of the new regime. Will it become increasingly challenging for teams like Newcastle and Aston Villa to sustain their ambition and investment in the playing squad whilst adhering to these limits and achieving immediate financial returns? 
Only time will tell.